As we look at the remainder of 2019, we currently have five proposed statements that are making their way through the due process. The comment period on subscription-based IT arrangements ended on August 23rd. We received 33 comment letters on this proposed statement, and we will begin our re-deliberations at the October meeting. The Public-Private Partnerships and Availability Payment Arrangements comment period just ended on September 13th. Redeliberations also will begin in October. The comment period for the most recent deferred compensation proposal will end on September 27th. In addition, the proposed omnibus statement comment period ends October 4th. Finally, we'll soon be releasing a proposed statement regarding the replacement of the interbank offered rates. The EV will have a November 27th comment deadline. We look forward to our stakeholders' continued participation in these due process opportunities. Regarding the technical agenda, there's been some important additions to the research agenda. First and foremost, we will be looking at capital asset reporting from a number of different angles, including what should be capitalized as an asset versus what should be expensed as maintenance. We'll also be taking another look at condition reporting. This will be a massive research effort. We've added a research activity on interim gap financial reporting. We will focus on business type activities, but we'll also look at general purpose government reporting. Finally, we'll be researching investment fees. Some financial statement users have called for either the display or disclosure of all investment fees incurred by governments, including those associated with hedge funds and fund of funds. We will be looking into the feasibility of such presentations or disclosures. On the financial reporting model improvements, the board made a significant breakthrough at its August meeting by reaching a tentative conclusion on the measurement focus for governmental funds. It will be a short-term focus based on the following three characteristics. One, the term used to classify short-term transactions and long-term transactions would be established by the specific contractual or statutory terms of the transactions, or using estimated payments when there are no contractual terms. Two, items arising from long-term transactions would be recognized when due, that is, the date at which the payment is scheduled, or if not scheduled, it's the date expected to be made in accordance with the recognition terms. And three, the recognition period would be one year. Regarding some of our other projects, progress continues to be made on both revenue and expense recognition and disclosure framework projects. Regarding RER, we have tentative conclusions on the classification of revenue expense transactions and we are now deliberating recognition and measurement issues with the expectation of issuing a preliminary views document by June of next year. On the disclosure front, we expect an exposure draft to be ready by February of 2020. For those focused on 2019, we have one more due process document up our sleeve, the 2020 Implementation Guide Update. This proposed update is expected to include a number of questions and answers on fiduciary activities and leases. That ED is scheduled to be cleared by the board in November. Dave, this will be a busy period for both GASB and stakeholders. Yes, and we couldn't do it without our stakeholder participation in the due process. 